to this week's edition of World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley reporting from Washington, D.C. Now, uh, we want to uh, pay attention to protest actions, mass mobilizations, and the political struggle against the Obama regime, but also against their reactionary Republican opponents. The fight is always going to be on two fronts. On the one side, against the Obama fascist corporate state, and on the other side, against those ultra-reactionary Republicans who have their own method of looting and pillaging and ultimately killing. And therefore, we uh, we survey the panorama of uh, mass protest now emerging. Right? There is uh, an upsurge of mass activity. On the one side, we've had the Tea Party protest here in Washington on September 12th, almost a week ago as we record this program. And at the same time, we're going to have a protest in uh, Pittsburgh for the Group of 20 this coming week. And uh, we've also got some, um, well, some rather feeble anti-war protests on the, uh, on the agenda. Now, the idea has emerged out of all of this, which we're going to we'll describe some of these things in detail as we can. The idea has emerged. Why march on government when government is not the principal enemy? Government is simply a tool, a tool of financial interests of finance oligarchs, of Wall Street, of finance capital, of the world derivatives merchants cabal, of the bubble economy, globalization, the casino economy, and so forth, right? The hedge fund hyenas, the asset strippers, the derivatives merchants. This is truly the center of evil in our time. The principal objection to the federal government is that it's controlled by Wall Street. Therefore, uh, from a number of quarters in the past week has emerged the idea, why march on government when you could go to the heart of the beast in Wall Street? Why not have a march on Goldman Sachs? Uh, the uh, evidence against Goldman Sachs is, of course, overwhelming. Going back many decades, there is this useful article by Matt Taibbi in Rolling Stone from, I believe, their July issue. You can look at things like the crash of 1929. They play a role. They didn't create it, but they were involved with their investment trusts or mutual funds, the Shenandoah Fund and the Blue Ridge Fund and so forth. You can read about this in Galbraith. Uh, They are very much involved in the dot-com bubble of the early 80s. They're very much involved in bidding up the price of oil, as we've been saying from week to week here. Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and their ICE exchange added about, just those two firms added about $1 for every gallon of gasoline you were buying in the summer of 2008. And then, of course, uh, the derivatives and the uh, the bailout and the role of Hank Paulson, Hanky Panky Paulson, former Goldman Sachs executive, and all the rest of them uh, with their Goldman Sachs connections. Why not have a march on Goldman Sachs in the Wall Street area of lower Manhattan? And I'm talking a march that would not be simply a protest, simply a hue and cry against the monstrous excesses of Goldman Sachs, but it could be uh, linked and could uh, be organized around, indeed, the idea of a Tobin tax. In other words, making Wall Street pay, not just protesting them, not just uh, agitating uh, a protest movement, but making them pay the cost of the depression which they themselves have inflicted on the world. If you're upset about bonuses, you should be. If you're upset about the bailout, the so-called TARP, you should be upset to the point of wanting to claw back that money. Get the Wall Street parasites to pay through the nose. And there's a programmatic way to do it. The Tobin tax, a 1% tax on all financial turnover. That means derivatives, including the market-traded derivatives, the options, futures, and all the combinations thereof, options, futures, and indices, all derivatives, and all the combinations of those. 
There are also then the over-the-counter derivatives, you know, the catalog, the credit default swaps, the structured investment vehicles, the collateralized debt obligations, the mortgage-backed securities, asset-backed securities, and on and on, plus stocks, bonds, U.S. Treasury securities. Why not? Uh, commodities, oil, a good way to cut down speculation. Put a 1% tax on those oil future index contracts, uh, forward market in oil, spot market in oil. Uh, and the question then of foreign exchange, which is trillions and trillions per day. All financial transactions, 1% Tobin tax, a sales tax on Wall Street. You pay between 5 and 10 to 11 percent sales tax, depending on the state you live in. You may even be paying that on your grocery bill, which makes this an extremely onerous, regressive tax. Goldman Sachs is practicing flash trading, super speed trading, faster than the speed of light, according to some versions. They're practicing program trading. They're practicing high, fu high frequency trading. That's all wonderful. Oh, we're so impressed by the innovative financial products coming out of Goldman Sachs. But the bottom line is 1% on every trade goes to the federal treasury, half of it, one half of 1% to the federal treasury, and one half of 1% to the various states. I call, therefore, on leaders who may be going to Pittsburgh uh, this week, this coming week, uh, the anti-globalization people, if you are serious, if you have any programmatic content of all, at all, beyond impotent protest and a chance to, uh, to smash a few windows in honor of the G20, the IMF, and the World Bank, why not take concrete measures, practical steps, to diminish the overweening, hypertrophied, and uh, preponderant power of finance capital in this society. Strike a blow against the casino economy, against the globalized derivative merchants, against the various Paulsons and Bernankes and Geithners and Summerses and the rest of them who have uh, created this monstrous world economic breakdown crisis. A march on Goldman Sachs, nonviolent and uh, not involving civil disobedience, at least from my point of view, purely political, designed to inflict a 1% Tobin tax on these characters. Now, as we reported last week, the movement one year after the fall of Lehman Brothers, one year after the beginning of the more acute phase, or this, this preliminary phase, really, of the uh, collapse of the Anglo-American banking system and, indeed, of the U.S. dollar, uh, this is now gathering uh, interest. The AFL-CIO, as we reported last week, is demanding a tax of one mil, that would be a Tobin tax, on primarily stock transactions. That is, of course, too little and too narrow. Not one mil, but ten mils, one percent. One cent on the dollar. One percent of the entire transaction, and not just stocks. Uh, that would already yield uh, several hundred billion dollars uh, over the course of a year. But the big category, the big potato here is derivatives, exchange-traded derivatives and over-the-counter or designer derivatives, which in many cases we can't even estimate because they are not reportable thanks to the defeat of um, the valiant Brooks Lee Bourne of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission back in the Clinton administration. She was defeated by Bullet Bob Rubin of Goldman Sachs and Citibank, as well as by Greenspan, the Ayn Rand freak who helped to bring you this depression, we were told at that time, oh no, making derivatives reportable is communism. So march on Wall Street, march on Goldman Sachs, and get a 1% Tobin tax. We'll be back in a minute. You're listening to GCN. GCN. Genesis Communication Radio Network. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. We're discussing the idea which has emerged now from a number of quarters of a march on Wall Street 
featuring protest against Goldman Sachs, but a protest with teeth, a protest with program and content and substance, the 1% Tobin tax on the speculative turnover, the flows of hot money by these globalized finance oligarchs who are the principal uh, marplots uh, in civilization at the present time. And, of course, uh, the AFL-CIO has launched a campaign for a small and, and narrowly defined Tobin tax, but a Tobin tax nevertheless. That would be a one mil tax on stock turnovers. Make it broader. Make it derivative, stocks, bonds, commodities, foreign exchange, uh, everything basically that goes across these exchanges. It's a sales tax. Everybody pays it. 1%. We pay between 5 and 10. Dear bankers, you talk of shared sacrifice. So sacrifice already. Sacrifice 1% of your flash trading and your high-frequency trading and your other program trading 